All right, good morning, everyone, and welcome to County Executive Pittman's virtual press conference. Uh, this morning, the County Executive will share updates on our county's COVID response and some other items, and Dr. Kalyana Rahman will provide comments on the continued COVID response efforts. We'll take questions after. Uh, as a reminder, please put your name and media affiliation in the chat, and I'll call on folks for questions in that order. If you are not asking a question, please keep your camera off and your microphone on mute. And with that, Mr. County Executive. Thanks, Jeff. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. I um, um, I ran all the way here from Glen Burnie, got here just in time in Annapolis. Um, that's not completely true, but I did get a mile into the uh, the torch run with our law enforcement officers who are still out there running. Um, if you're if you're coming down uh, down Route Two from Glen Burnie, uh, I don't know that they've made it. Maybe they have made it to Annapolis by now, but cheer them on. Um, we've got great officers out there raising money for Special Olympics. Um, so thank you to all of them. Uh, COVID, fortunately, there's there's not a lot of um, uh, news there, which is a good thing. The case rate continues to drop. The hospitalization numbers continue to drop. We'll he hear more from Dr. Kalyana Raman on that and on, on our process of, um, of moving to more pop-up and business-based uh, uh, vaccination center sites. Um, so we must continue our summer surge to prevent our fall surge of cases, our summer surge of vaccinations, that is. Uh, last night, the county council had a good night. Um, most most of what passed was was seven zero. We love that. Um, shows that uh, folks are working together. Uh, the Crofton Enclave purchase will be able to move forward. Um, that bill was passed. Uh, assessment um, will be will be um, made to the residents to pay financing on a loan to purchase the property that was going to be developed and. Uh, we will probably be signing that bill with the community in the coming days. Um, another bill that passed last night um, was really a, a, an easy one. There were two two bills that were very close to aligned, but um, it was necessary to, to merge the two into one. And I want to thank um, Councilman Bulky as well as Pete Barron, our Legislative uh, Affairs Director, um, for working through the details of that so that they could be merged into one bill. So we will be signing that. I believe tomorrow we'll get you um, a location for that. And um, at the same time, I'll be signing an executive order that removes the uh, the emergency order that a lot of the restrictions were based on. Uh, none of those restrictions are in place. We needed the, a, the order to stay in effect to keep our restaurants operating outdoors. And we've figured out how to do that through legislation. So. Uh, the restaurants will continue to be able to um, um, to have outdoor seating. Uh, some of that space is parking space that, um, according to their uh, to the code, they would need parking and can't do that. So we're going to keep that going through the fall and then assess the future from there. Um, the um, the other bill that did not pass by 7-0 but passed by 4-3 was probably the most important piece of legislation last night and one of the most important pieces of legislation that this council will ever pass. I know the country is watching us on our resilience authority. So we got state approval to do that through a bill in the, the Maryland General Assembly and the, um, the actual authority will finance um, resilience projects. We have a resilience plan that we have, our staff has been working on um, with the University of Maryland. But this is a big deal because nobody has actually put together an authority that is, is sort of quasi-government, not actually um, within any department of government, but um, controlled by government. So we'll be appointing a board to that. The mayor appoints a seat as well. We're doing this with the city of Annapolis. And, um, and then we can move forward on financing mechanisms to do the work that we know will have to be done to respond to the impacts of climate climate change. And um, we know that this is gonna put us in a great position to get federal funds that will be, um, that will likely be dedicated for resilience projects and to get private funds as well, um, investments from, from the private sector um, for projects that they benefit from most likely. So we're um, going to move fast on that. There'll be a bill signing on that in the coming days as well. Um, and then finally, I just want to, I just want to recognize the great work that the Anne Arundel County Department of Health did in its gun violence forums on Thursday and Friday of last week. Um, there were, they were online. Um, there were over 300 viewers in the first the first session that's that's on Facebook. The others are going up soon, so people can go back and look at that. But they put together um, our gun violence intervention team put together a really fantastic panel led by the the, the head of the American Public Health um, um, 
um, association. And uh, the uh, Dr. Kelly Adarama will talk about some of the outcomes of that, some of the, the focuses that we're going to be moving on in this county, um, an issue that not normally is done at the local level, but that um, I also I believe that Anne Arundel County is is showing other jurisdictions that this is something that we can make progress on. Uh, never easy, but we've we figured out a way to do it through public health, um, not political, um, and reducing the, the the numbers of gun deaths in our county, we hope. So I will pass it over to Dr. Kalyana Raman from here. Great, great executive. Let's start with um, where we are with COVID. So I think the most critical piece is that our hospitalizations continue to drop for around um, 15 uh, at this point, which is one of the lowest hospitalizations we've had for COVID. Um, and that's fantastic. That's how we're gonna know we're doing well. At the same time, our case rate is decreasing down point six, um, but as more and more people get vaccinated, we will pay more and more attention to that hospitalization number. Um, we're seeing our percent positivity down at 1.3 percent. Folks are continuing to get vaccinated. We're seeing somewhere, uh, somewhere around 750, 800 people a day getting their first dose. We've got 70 percent of all adults who got at least one shot, which is fantastic. 54 percent of the population total. Um, we're seeing that um, we're, we're achieving equity in terms of our vaccinations each week. Last week, 20% um, of those vaccinated were Black, 17% Hispanic. Um, one place where we'd like to see some better performance is in our 18 to 24-year-olds. We see that 43% of our 12 to 17-year-olds have had at least one shot, compared to 46% of 18 to 24-year-olds, despite the fact that they've had quite a head start and a lot more time to get that shot. So we still want to focus on our younger folks um, to get their vaccine, asking parents to get your kids to get vaccinated, and to all the kids who watch press conferences, ask your parents to get you to get your shot. Um, this is what success looks like, and we need to keep pushing with that. That's why we're bringing our vaccine clinics out to the community. We partnered with First Sunday in Annapolis, um, did some first and second doses this weekend. Um, we're in the malls, libraries, farmers markets, food pantries, churches, schools, doctors' offices, and we're going to continue to push on that. So. Um, we are really excited about those those opportunities. They tend to be smaller numbers, but that's what it is. We're going to get shots one arm at a time right now. The last piece is to ask people to continue to wear your mask if you're not vaccinated. Um, that is really important to keep this vac uh, sorry this case rate and this hospitaliz hospitalization where it is. We have to continue to do the safety measures that we need that we've been doing in the past year plus. And then I did want to follow up on the uh, on our gun violence um, prevention seminar. Um, we did have uh, 1,300 people join us online for our keynote event, um, which was fantastic. Um, definitely something to keep in mind. We talked about having this in person or online right now. It looks like going forward, we'll do both. Um, it's a great way to get a lot of people to be able to join us. Dr. Georges Benjamin, the executive director of the American Public Health Association, talked about why and how we should address gun violence as a public health issue and really focusing in, on how do we decrease violence. And when we focus in on that, there are, it opens up the number of ways that we can actually decrease gun violence, keep people safer, and prevent those injuries and deaths. And so we're highlighting three key priorities going forward. One is creating and publishing monthly data. It's our way of providing visibility and transparency around this problem and what we can do about it developing and implementing a public awareness campaign around safe gun storage to prevent gun violence, uh, and implementing a coordinated crisis response for reporting and following up on gun violence incidents. These are ways that we can both prevent initial gun injuries and death and also break that cycle when it happens, because we do know that gun violence does function as an epidemic. Where there is gun violence, there tends to be more gun violence later. So breaking that cycle is critical. It also builds on current work that we're doing with the National Gun Safety Consortium. The CE has been a strong leader in that national, uh, national consortium. And that Anne Arundel leads the state in the use of extreme risk protection orders, which temporarily remove firearms and ammunition from people who are uh, posing a risk to themselves and others. And so there's work that's already being done, and we're going to be pushing that forward from the public health uh, from the public health perspective to keep people safer. With that, I will turn it back over to you, Jeff. 
Thank you, Dr. Kalyana Raman. Uh, we'll now open it up for questions. Again, please put your name and media affiliation in the chat if you'd like to ask a question. Rob Lang, WBAL. Okay, good morning. Hope everybody can hear me. Um, this is the first time since we've spoken uh, since the state announced that they would be closing the mass vac sites and the uh, Navy Marine Corps Stadium site will close on July 3rd. Opinion from both uh, Dr. Uh, Dr. K and um, the county executive. Uh, I know you were expecting this, but is this the right call? Is it too soon? Too should it stay open longer? That sort of thing. Well, I hope Dr. Kalyan or Raman will agree with me. I know he does, um, that it is the right call. And the, the numbers I, I was talking to, um, Chief Wolford, um, who's been managing our fire department, has been man managing the site um, about the numbers coming in, and it's not enough to justify keeping it open. And we can, we can get out into the community with sites. It's easy for people to find out where to get vaccinated online. Go to aacounty.org slash covidvax, and you will find a place close to home. And uh, um, it's... it's um, or, or you can call them. So we don't need that site to uh, continue our summer surge of vaccines. So I think closing it's the right the right move. I agree with that. Good. Okay, Doctor. I saw Doctor K nodding his head. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. All right, Rachel Menetoff, WJZ. Hi. Thank you. Um, can you clarify now that? the state of emergency has been removed or lifted, does this mean all capacity limits are also lifted? Can you clarify what this means? So there are no capacity limits in um, um, that are under the county's executive order at this point. So what this does is it takes away my power to create those kind of, of limits at the county level. And, and um, it hasn't been removed yet. Um, we don't remove it till we sign the bill allowing the restaurants to continue um, operating outdoors, but we will sign that bill tomorrow and, and remove it tomorrow. Thank you. All right, John Frenet, Ion Annapolis. This is a question for Dr. Kelly Narman. Uh, a ballpark idea of how many people do you know were vaccinated on Sunday's event at Visit Annapolis and the first Sunday Arts Festival, do you know? Sorry, um, I believe between first and second doses, close to 20. Okay. Was that about what you expected? That's kind of what we're seeing with community sites is that we'll get a small number and we're just, uh, that's, that's fine. We'd like more people to get vaccinated, but we're, we're happy to do it for that number. Great. Thank you. All right. Rita over at WNAV. Uh, going back to creating and publishing that monthly data report on gun violence in, in the county, um, can you clarify when this might start, if it hasn't started already? So we did uh, we did share this data uh, on our seminar, and that'll be up on the uh, on our website. Um, there's a we have a page dedicated to gun violence prevention, and it'll be posted there. So every month you'll you'll have new data, and I'm assuming that's from Anne Arundel County Police as well as the City of Annapolis. That is correct. Thank you. All right, last call for questions. Anybody else? Uh, if you've got a question, please put your name and media affiliation in the chat. All right, seeing no further questions, thank you all, and we'll see you next week.